Good morning, Gordon. Good morning. You know, my first job is being a dad. And uh, it's a good job. I like the job. They make it easier for me, <laughs> Esther and Debbie. But I also want to tell you something about Gordon College before we get to the message. I am so blessed to work with such a great team. Occasionally, I like to sneak on my colleagues to get to do some things that they may not know about. So when I got to know that I was speaking here, I told myself I know there was going to be a meeting for my department around this time. I will not tell the chair of the department, Dr. Canister. And I will tell him on Wednesday that I will not be able to come to the meeting <laughs> because I have to be here. But he decided to disobey my instructions <laughs> and get the whole department to come and give me a support. Give a hand to my great department, <laughs> Biblical Studies, Christian Ministries. <laughs> but by the way, look, when I say he disobeyed my orders, that's not true. He's my boss. <laughs> it is always great to be able to stand here and to share with you. Though I have not been able to be present for most of the services, I have tried to follow from my office while doing other things that time is asking of me, the series that are going on with the Old Testament characters. I've been encouraged by the speakers, and I've been encouraged by the chapel staff in their desire to see God work on this campus and in our lives. It is always great to put the first things first, to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, so that all other things may flow seamlessly as we all pursue God's desire, God's wishes, and dreams for us. Today, the character I'll be speaking on is a character that has so many names depending on your accent or language. Some have called him Habez. I call him Jabez. The proper pronunciation on this particular continent I understand is Jabez. I'll be speaking from a passage from First Chronicles chapter four, from verse nine to ten. And please join me in reading that, and we'll say a few words of prayer. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying because I bore him in pain. Jabez called upon the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my border, and that your hand might be with me, and that you would keep me from harm, so that it might not bring me pain. And God granted what he asked. My topic for today is a test for change. A test. I don't mean T-E-S-T. -E no. A test. T-H-I-R-S-T. -E yeah, you get it now. <laughs> I have a unique problem called accent. <laughs> Let's say a short word of prayer. Dear Lord, we are thankful to you this morning. I pray as we open your word, please speak to us, bless our hearts, re-energize us and re-energize our focus. Give us a test and a hunger for you and your purposes for our lives. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Jebus was one of those young men whose name will not, could not just be passed over. In 1 Chronicles, 
By the time you reach chapter 4, the chronicler wanted to give a long list of people from the tribe of Judah. This will be the tribe that David will come from. Hundreds of years later, this will be the tribe that Jesus or Joseph, the foster father of Jesus, will be known to have come from. But the chronicler walks through the list, mentioning every other person's name, and then discover that there is one person whose name could not just be mentioned and passed over. And that is this man, Jabez. His life was an extraordinary life, as some of us may have. His beginning was not pleasant, as some of us may identify with. But I see his life as a journey. And if you see even life generally as a journey, then may I suggest to you that some start in difficult places and others meet painful circumstances on the way. But one thing we all share in common is to see our lives bear some fruition, to succeed in what we believe God has called us to do. But for us to be able to move from where we are to the next stage, my dear brothers and sisters, friends, students who are already tired of the sound of my voice because you have to hear that six hours a week, (laughs) now you have an extra dose and you are asking, what did the chapel office do to me? (laughs) May God grant you mercy. For us to move from here to the future, there is one word that cannot be glossed over, and that word is called change. Change is happening around us. Change is an irresistible reality of life. But the other kind of change I'm talking about today is one that is born out of holy discontent for mediocrity in the pursuit of good things, great things in life. Jabez was born in circumstances that were not so pleasant to his mother. And though that was not the plan, that became his name. Or should I put it this way, that influenced the name he would bear for the rest of his life. Let me highlight three things about this man, Jabez, as I speak on the, a test for change. First, let's call it the plight of Jabez. The plight of Jabez is what is beyond his control. It was his mother's experience that will lead to his naming as the guy whose name is associated with pain. Imagine, you meet him, you shake hands with him and say, what is your name? My name is Jabez. Oh, man, you must be a pain in the butt. (laughs) No, he will say, it is linked to my mother's story. But for those who will not have the interest and desire to ask about the origin of his name, they know that this guy's life is associated with pain. How many of you want to hang around with people whose lives are associated with pain? That was beyond his control. John Wesley was trying to explain this and try to be nice to Jabez's mother, who decides out of her story to give him this name. And this is how Wesley wrote, what Wesley wrote. For courage and for fervent piety, she recalls that she recalls this, that it might be a memorandum to herself that she bore that pain. Or it might be a memorandum to him that she came into this world in veils of tears. Can you imagine if that is what you have to remember anybody, anytime somebody mentions your name? But beyond that, I'd like to draw your attention to something called name. Nowadays, people call their children 
by name because they want to be different. I tell my children they are lucky that they are not called Daniel and Daniela. Some parents just thought, I travel to somewhere and uh, I like the place. Let me call my child Sarajevo. But you should know in the biblical tradition, naming is beyond the control of Jabez in these circumstances. And yet naming signifies your identity, your reputation, the very essence of you. Name is so significant in this ancient context that it could actually give hints of the kind of honor that comes with you. For positive or negative, Jabez's reputation was associated with pain. That was his plight. Did he do anything to end that? No. His mother just had birth complications. And that determined the name she would get, he would get. But know this for this young man, Jabez. His mother may identify him with her pain, and others may see a man associated with pain. But Jabez will not let that define his destiny. God knew Jabez before he was born. When his mother conceived him as the psalm we followed in the responsive psalm reading reminds us, He knew him in his mother's womb. God had purposes and some great potentials for this young man. All that was pushed aside when the mother gave him that label based on her experience. It may be for good reason. It may also be for bad reason. Jabez would never allow those to determine the course of his life. And his mother's experience must be his mother's experience. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I don't know about circumstances surrounding your upbringing, where you are in your very state right now, whether you say your parents are successful and so you dance in the success of your parents, I want to suggest to you that is not enough. You've got to do something with your life. I don't know the circumstances surrounding your story. Maybe you are telling yourself, you know what? In my family, there is these painful experiences we have been going through, and it is so bad. I just said in one of my classes, someone may say, oh, I was raised by a single mom and all that. I was raised by a single mom. I don't want to hear excuses. God has given each one of us in this room some potential. The world is big enough and there is a place for you to make a difference. There is no room to draw on our experiences from childhood, from birth, for family to justify why we will not do anything with our lives. We have God on our side as followers of Christ Jesus. We have the one who has power to conquer death. Friends, today I came to tell you that your challenges may be beyond your control, but you you must not rest until you find rest at the foot of the cross. Resolve with a real test, I plead, for change. And that that change may lead you to that fountain of life from which you can drink afresh and be refreshed. I came to tell you that it is time to drop out of the victim's parade. And disband your victim's mentality. 
Jabez will not allow the name, the very identity that has been bestowed upon him because of his mother's experience to chatter the course of his life. I came to tell you, God in college, that it is not too late to unveil the mask of shame to take a step forward and shine with the help of God. I came to tell you, the computer games may kill you. They may not pay your bills. I came to tell you, there are some who come to chapel and it's a perfect place to play on the computer, a time of God. And some of you are laughing because you probably are doing it. <laughs> Today, I came to remind you that laziness, fear, and excuses have power to cripple your success and rob you of every good thing in life, if you allow it. Too many people refer to family history, abuse, Sinful past to justify the reason they should live their lives wallowing in self pity. I have observed, though, that those who are thirsty for change are more likely to find strength within and help from God and others for that change. I was pastoring in England and I had this family in a congregation. In this family were two girls. I love these girls dearly. One of them was preparing for college and I was trying to encourage her to choose one of the colleges that I knew we could get her in, a very prestigious institution. She was quick to, talk, to tell me that, no, she wouldn't consider such a college. The reason is that in her family, nobody had finished college. And if she goes to college, she will move from the class of her family. And in order to be with her family, she would rather do something else than to go and earn degree from a prestigious institution. Family history was going to suppress and undermine these girls' future. My dear friends, it doesn't matter what your family story is. The God who knows you knows what you are capable of. It matters a great deal that you do not allow circumstances beyond your control. It matters that you do not accept recommendations of people whose opinion you should not count. To make you become someone else other than who God has called you to be. Jabez will not let that happen. And that leads me to the posture of Jabez. What was within his control? We are told in verse 9a, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. Jabez's honor could be seen in two ways. He's from the tribe of Judah. That should bring some more honor. But to state that he was more honorable than his brothers is to say that he did something about his life that set him apart from his brothers and society could acknowledge it. Yet, that was the guy whose name was associated with pain. You know, in terms of posture, Jabez could have chosen three options. One, he could have chosen the path of victimhood. He could have told himself, you know what? My mother called me Jabez. Maybe I'm not good for anything. I shouldn't do anything with my life. 
and always live in self-pity. Oh, everybody have mercy on me. Good things should come to me. I don't go for anything. He decided victimhood is not a choice to take. He could have chosen what I call ratification. That is to say that he could have said to himself, you know what? My name is Jebus. I call Spain. Therefore, I will go out there and call Spain. And be a troublemaker. And somebody said, why are you a troublemaker? He said, don't you know my name? He decided, no, that's not the option. Thirdly, he chose alteration. He chose to do something about it. He chose the readiness to alter public perception of him and to defy anything else his name suggests. He would not let the pain at his birth or public image be determined by an incident that happened during his birth. Change begins, I suggest, by doing what is within your power to alter the way you live, your condition, or circle of influence. To be in Gordon College is a great privilege. Do you know how many people would have wished to be at your place? If you came here and all you do is to be content with these, to sleep in any possible chance you get, to a party, and get a degree with no skills, do you understand that if I were God, I will not trust you for anything important in life here on. <laughs> Thank God I'm not God. But it doesn't mean you should not change. <laughs> you should have a test for change as Jabez had. Jabez had both what we call ascribed honor and acquired honor. He was honorable because he's from the tribe of Judah. It comes with that honor. But he acquired honor because he lived as a man of integrity. He put himself out there. He tried to make a difference in society. People saw it, and the chronicler, Lord Jabez himself, writes, he was more honorable comparing to his own brothers who bore better names. A person from the tribe of Judah is a great thing, but for Jabez, something more could be done. To talk about the posture of Jabez is to talk about his attitude, the inner voice, the inner disposition, the resilience, the test for godly attitude in pursuit for a higher altitude. To talk about his posture is to talk about his action. The readiness to act, do something about his life, to conduct his life in the face of challenges. To talk about his attitude is to talk about his knowledge. He became aware that his true identity is not what the label Jabez connotes. His true identity that he has a God called the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. He is the God of creation. He is the God who knew him from his mother's womb. He is the God who created him with potentials to make a difference in this world. And he would not let anything else stop him from doing that. My dear brothers and sisters, whenever I'm asked to speak at chapel, I imagine when I was sitting where you sit. And I try to think about words of encouragement that I would have loved to hear, and yet words of truth I would have loved to know. Your great future begins here.
And every experience here is expensive. <laughs> oh, I hear, I see the reaction. That's, I just heard that you say, it's true. But do you treat it as expensive? Are you that serious about what you get from here and from this experience? Some of you pay $120 to go and sleep in one class. $120. We can talk more later. <laughs> but you see, Jabez did what he could do within his power, and then there is something he could not do, and that is what I call the prayer of Jabez. That is what only God can do. When he did what was within his power and he earned that honorable standing, he told himself that was not sufficient. He cried out to God. He prayed that God will bless him indeed. God, paraphrasing perhaps Jabez, having done my path, having found strength to rise above my circumstance, I need more of your help for greater things ahead. God, that you will bless me indeed. That you would enlarge my territory. Which could be paraphrased as enlarging my circle of influence. That you, your hand would be with me. God's hand of protection and guidance will be with him. And then he says that God, you would keep me from evil. And then lastly he said, God, that I may not cause pain. That is what people expect of me. Grant that I may not cause pain. And we are told that God granted what he asked. What does it mean in English? It means God blessed him. It means God enlarged his territory. It means God's powerful hand was with him. And it means God kept him from pain and made him no pain to anyone. He is a God who hears and provides. If we would desire that test to seek him, he preserves, he sustains, he strengthens, and he empowers his people for great things. He's a God who holds your destiny. My dear brothers and sisters in closing, do you want to see change from whatever condition you are in right now? To be a blessing to others to be able to thrive in your life here on. To break bad habits, to break destructive habits, and ask God to enable you to do what is right and to rise to more challenges on the way upward. To begin a new walk of Christian integrity and to live life that will bring honor. Do you really want God to bless you and make you a blessing. How desperate are you? God is here to break bondages, set the captives free, and release those who are trapped in self-pity and mediocrity. God is here to effect change and bless those who have a hunger and thirst for greater things are heard. I believe that we are uniquely blessed at Golden College to assemble great talents endowed with God's potential who know God and love God and who can do so many great things if they will dare to take a step forward. I urge you, 
to think about the story of Jabez and to let that test begin today. I remember that old school hymn. I am pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. And I am praying to heaven I found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. There are great things ahead, great things in store. Great things for your future if you will take the step forward today. Where in your life do you want to rise to the challenge? And where do you need God to help you? Shall we pray? God, we are so thankful to you this morning for your grace. Thank you for your words of encouragement and challenge. I pray you set us on fire to go and make a difference in a manner that brings glory to you. Bless each one in this room and let our lives be living testimonies of what you are able to do when people are thirsty to fulfill the great things you have in store for them. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. And may God bless you.